All right, here we go. Consuelo, we're happy you. Hi. Hi, you're sideways. Hello. Turn the camera the other way. So it's straight up and down. <laughs> oh God, hold on. Is Dean there? Uh, no, but the, the other significant other is. Okay. I'm so sorry, honey. I like being okay. seen backwards. It's always you're, fun. You're sideways. I'm sideways. Yeah. I, could do the, I could do the interview like this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Rob, can you put this That's on? good. It will go that way? Okay, so I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna hold you like this then. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Or Ralph could hold it. Yeah. Or Ralph could hold it, exactly. Or I can just put you here, how's that? Yeah, Bye. that's perfect. Hi. Hi, guys. Good to see you. So good to see you. <laughs> it feels How? like forever, my God. I know, right? Well, we talk all the time, but I don't get to hug you and see you in person. So I'm excited that we're doing this today. Me too, honey. Yeah. How are things in New York? You there? Oh, there we go. There. How's that? This Good. is my first official Instagram live. So forgive me. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> You're my it's first okay. <laughs> you, so, um, yeah, this is all new. It's, so it's going to be super easy. And thank you for doing this with me. I know that You've been, you guys have been in quarantine for, oh, how many weeks now? There in New York City. We've been, we've been in quarantine, babe, I think for probably six weeks now, at oh, least. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it's different. I mean, it's, you can't really go out there, right? You can't, I mean, except to the grocery <laughs> store. It feels a little bit like Handmaid's Tale, right? So you yeah. walk down the street and you know, New Yorkers already have that kind of you know, aggressive disposition, which we love because that's what makes a New Yorker a New Yorker. But mm -hmm. when you see someone who's not wearing a mask, you kind of get a little bit angry. I mean, in your eyes, you just, you give them sure. like, this beady eyed, like, who do you think you are to wear a mask? And so you, we really started to invent this whole character. I get it. And then you go through, you know, the kind of backstory about who this person is, what their family's like. I mean, it's really, <laughs> it's just, it's yeah, it's like, how were you, why were you were raised properly? Like, follow the rules, like, wear the follow mask. the rules. And listen, I, I, you know me, I'm not really a person that normally likes to follow rules, to be honest, yeah. but this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm kind of following the rules, I feel, you know. Well, now, I want to, I want to get into that and introduce you properly, but thank you for everybody for joining. Uh, for the joining Thinking of Art me. Call series is something that that I brainstormed and I wanted to do to introduce kind of artists and creatives and people that you should know. And um, that's the whole reason why I kind of am doing this, the Thinking of Art Call series. And Consuelo Vanderbilt Costin is not only a dear friend, but she's created this amazing creative community called Soho Muse. And I want to get into that and talk about that at one point. But first of all, I just want to see like, you know, I was I was reminiscing uh, over the last couple of days before this interview and looking back to our interview that we did I think it was like six years ago on that boat where I was curating an exhibition on a boat and you were so kind to interview me and cover, you know, those artists that I was that I was uh, introducing at that time. So can you talk a little bit about that just briefly, that show that you were doing that was broadcast? So um, that was part of a series on ZDF, which is an amazing media company in Germany that I've done a lot of shows with. And what I loved about what they were doing is they were really featuring artists in New York um, who were doing exceptional things. And so it was such an honor to be able to interview you, Ronnie, because not only are you so natural, but your expertise in art and kind of introducing new artists to the world that maybe people didn't know about, and then exposing them to the German market, which was so fantastic. So it was a six part documentary. And I love working in Germany. And it's just been, you know, an amazing, even though I, I wish I did speak German. That's, that's the only thing it's really it's, I know, same. It's a I little was bit listening to the the subtitles, uh, whatever, and, and just chuckling a little bit. But can we jump into like, how did you break away from family traditions? Obviously with the famous last name and there's a lot of pressure that goes with that. How did you break away from the traditions that you, you know, obviously had and jump into a music career? Um, great question. Um, 
You know, I feel that I, I come from this wonderful legacy. I do. And especially living in New York, it gives me, you know, incredible pride um, to know what has been built before me and the extraordinary women actually in the Vanderbilt mm -hmm. family who've done amazing things and have been pioneers in their own right. By the way, sorry to interrupt. I just want you to know Ralph is creating, my husband is creating this wonderful little contraption behind me because I'm holding this <laughs> and we're now moving this contraption okay. a little bit further so I'm not so close. Okay, yes. it's a, we love seeing you close. I love seeing you close, but I get it. I get it. So Raf, Raf is, uh, okay. There we go. Thank, thank you, yes. Raf. I don't know Here we can see more of you. Beautiful. Thank you, Raf. We love you. Yay. Thank you, Raf. Thank you. Look at your hair. Thank you, Raf. It's uh, Yeah, maybe straighten. tilt it tilt it up a little bit so you can slightly, a little bit more, Raf. Yes. Oh. Good. Your head, your top of your head's a little cut off. Up a little. Go up a little. Uh, yeah. Okay. Raph, tilt it slightly higher. I have to raise Here. it. Oh, good. I can go down. There, baby. How's that? There we go. Okay. Perfect. Good. I, there. That's oh, good. The lighting. Okay. 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 How's that? Perfect. Good. That's good. That's okay. really good. Okay. Right. So I we're, we're back. So, and the question you asked, it's like, how have I dealt with that? Um, yeah. As I said, just. Being in New York has been such an amazing gift to appreciate my family in a very different way. Um, but I feel that my mom, she was the epitome of actually a person who had an extraordinary, came from you know this amazing background, but that didn't identify her at all. My mother was a pioneer in her own right and she I don't know, she just made life okay. So my sisters and I really saw um, that you could be part of something and from something, but it didn't identify you. Um, and mm -hmm. so music was very important to me to always be identified with my own name. So I went by Consuelo or Consuelo Costa and I never used the Vanderbilt name in that context. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to know me for my music and to hear and listen to my lyrics and just get a sense of me rather than, um, you know, my family and where I'm from. Yeah, of course. So was Naked the first song that was the breakout single for you? My first single actually was a song called Let Love Wash Over Me. That was a song okay. that I was signed to. Um, and I had a seven piece male rock band, which let me just tell you that. <laughs> Sounds hot. It's, it's not only hot, but a woman with a seven piece male rock band is, mm. <laughs> thank God there's no egos involved at all. Just saying, not, not at all, right? Yeah. Um, so we <laughs> recorded this amazing, uh, it was very sensual pop rock, very kind of in the wallflower vein. Mm -hmm. um, and Naked, yes, was the first single from that album that ended up staying on the Billboard dance charts for 16 weeks. And I was like, how does that happen? That's, it's the one medium where music can actually be, it can go into so many different genres. So you could write a pop song and that could be translated to a country song, could be translated to a dance song. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. music is so magical in that way. Um, yeah. So yeah, that I was loved the beginning. I loved going back and I've seen those videos, but going back and watching those videos again, um, how do you, why do you think people started calling you the rebel heiress? Well, firstly, I think that, you know, rebel is a great word. I think heiress, sorry, I, yeah. I don't identify with that word, but the two words together, I really like that makes great. Um, I think because I have always gone, kind of gone against the grain, mm -hmm. um, what people thought and who I was going to be. Um, I've, I've never kind of succumbed to that. Um, I yeah. just kind of led by my own drum, really, you know, my yeah. songwriting books are kind of the chapters of my life and um, I'm an entrepreneur at spirit and I love both business, you know, being an entrepreneur and incorporating that into my creative endeavors. And so, yeah, that's, I think that's where it came from. But as I said, Harris, I think is just a, not, yeah, not who no. I am, and not rebel. Like, definitely, I identify you. I definitely as a rebel because you're just basically <laughs> like, 
I'm going to do this. I don't care what, you know, what people say or think. I'm just going to do it because I feel passionate about it. And I respect that. Um, what, can you talk about like a pivotal moment in your life that kind of changed, changed the direction and course of your life? Yeah, um, and and um, I'm sharing with you because I actually I normally don't talk about it, but um, interestingly enough, it was the anniversary of my mom's passing a few days ago. Not to be Debbie Downer, but it it really brought it back home. Um, I mm -hmm. had a car accident when I was 19. Um, my ex called my dimple an angel's kiss, so I appreciate my ex doing that. Um, but. I was in hospital for nearly a month and it was horrific. And it, mm. and I was told that I actually died during the car accident. I didn't know that to be true, but I, that's what I was told. And I, um, it changed everything from where and what I was about and what I was doing to, it forced me kind of on, you know, to really look at myself and figure out the person that I wanted to be. And so a year after the car accident, and I ended up in even drama school. And a year after, and a year and a half later, I was signed to my first major label. So it just it taught me about discipline. Um, it taught me that you know you're not invincible, especially at such a young age. You don't realize that. Um, and I think that it it really did. I'm forever grateful. And having this temple is a constant reminder that you know what, it's just. Things can be taken away just as fast as they're there. So, um, yeah, it was it was a really big moment for me. And, and as I said, it, you know, bringing it up, it, I, I normally don't talk about it. So, well, thank you for sharing that. I know no, that's very, very personal. Sense. Yeah, uh, for you, is there is there a story from your music career that kind of stands out as one of the most challenging moments because you performed in front of thousands of people? Um, is there one instance or or a story that could be funny or challenging that you could share? Oh, I have many <laughs> embarrassing, and, and I can't see who's <laughs> tuned in right now, but my goodness, there's a lot of stories. Um, but <laughs> one of those fantastic stories, um, <laughs> I was asked to perform at the Dodger Stadium. Okay. For all of you wonderful baseball players. Oh, uh, and you bring water? Wow. Good husband. Wow. Look wow. at that. Hey, intermission with the water. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how many people were in the stadium so when you were? <laughs> there's 50,000 people. Right? Oh, wow. Small amount. And, and so you get the choice to basically perform with the organist who has been there for at least 95 years, maybe 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> Love her. God bless. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Or you can sing a cappella. And there's a two second delay because you're literally watching this person in the bleachers. So you pray to God that you're just going to be able to hear this. And you have literally, you're just looking at screens and the baseball players in front of you. So back yeah. up, I had sprained my ankle um, playing tennis the day before. It's excruciating. Uh, I was playing with my dad and I yeah. thought I could beat him. And anyway, so. I had a sprained ankle and I was in a cast. And I mm -hmm. had this really wonderful thought that I could like have my own little Cleopatra moment where the <laughs> baseball players would take me into the field. Yeah, there's a thing called an insurance <laughs> policy. So no, that, that so was no not carrying working. you to the field. No, no, that, that was not working out so well. So um, I, yeah, I'm wearing this very long dress that you can barely walk in, but at least it kind of covers, right? Right. And, uh, and I stood there and, you know, the baseball players, everyone's watching and there's not a pin drop. And it's God Bless America, which is honestly one of the hardest songs to sing on the planet. Any of you singers out there listening, like, it's just. Amazing, yeah. And 50,000 yeah. people, all eyes on you. I, Dying. I can't even imagine that feeling. Anyway, we had a little bit of a moment, but I'm just going to leave it at that. We're going to keep this very <laughs> PG, but it was great. <laughs> very but it was an eye-opening, it was an eye-opening moment. It was eye-opening. I knew that I never should wear that dress again. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end. I said goodbye to that dress as much as I loved oh. it. That was the end of that moment. That's amazing. I think well, really, that was one of those moments where my mom just said, thank, I, I give thank up. You, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. I was, like, I woke up this morning and I had yeah. the feel so alive song like ringing in my head 
And if for those of you that kind of saw my story earlier today, there were clips of that video. And you should look on YouTube and watch that video because it's really incredible. Thank but can you. you talk about the the controversy behind that video because it was banned in what ten countries when you shot or when it when it was released? So Tim Cox, who's this very innovative, brilliant director, um, and I trust him. So that's that's the amazing thing about you know creative collaborations is really where you find trust. And you say, you know what, I, I can see your vision and I know you have the best interest to make sure that the song is well represented, that, you know what I mean, that we're both, we're feeling the same message. And so he came to me and this was actually an experience that he had as a child um, where he kept seeing this morticianer and was this real or was this something that he was imagining? And then he had this interesting kind of sexual desire with it and I was like wow okay that's that's a lot of layers going on and he said would yeah. you be interested in taking the song feel so alive and literally turning it upside down and kind of creating something that's a little bit darker a little bit more just cutting edge to something that I don't think you would normally do and he said I'd love it so we filmed Rebel. in a working <laughs> morgue wow they put me in that crate in that barrel uh, for approximately 45 minutes. Now there's air vents, don't get me wrong. I'm not, but when I came out and that tear, that was a real tear. I just yeah. <laughs> I, You're like, get me I'm out of here. Moment, and I was so scared. And I'm like, yes, that was definitely a real live moment. So yeah. I, I love that. Where was that video? Where was it shot in the morgue? But then the other part in the beautiful, uh, was it a cathedral or where, where was the film, where was the rest of it filmed? Uh, Morticianer, excuse me. Sorry, okay. Morticianer. Mort I, I have my husband, This he's amazing for so many things. Now he's correcting my <laughs> English, my God. And I can't, this is the thing, I can't lie, right? So I have to just see when he comes up and he pops up with this message. It's so great. Thank you, Ralph. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Love, Ralph. So it was actually, it's part of this working morgue and, and actually that as a, and you know, when you see the, when I'm coming through and it almost looks like an angelic moment, right? As I'm yeah, singing, yeah. I'm Beautiful. on this dolly that is literally moving back and forth. You get a little bit, you know, seasick, but apart from that, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. How, and so speaking of Raph, yes. how has quarantine life been with your husband over these last, six plus weeks <laughs> he's there he can hear everything you're saying wow wow you went there wow <laughs> uh, you know i believe in creating pseudonames you know it's often when i perform <laughs> i do the same thing <laughs> so yeah. I, I invent a character yeah so um all bad behavior and anything that you decide it's okay i think it but you know that's part of being in quarantine right yeah so, i think i think <laughs> Oh, he's writing careful now. Careful uh, now. Honey, Ralph, like, I have an amazing husband who actually, I must say, has been so calm and patient while mm -hmm. his wife has not been the same. I, yeah. <laughs> I've had a few freak outs. I don't know if anyone else has felt that way, but I really, I'm being honest. I definitely, I, it's been a wee bit challenging. You, yeah. how have you been with this, honey? Um, I've had some moments. I've had a couple of breakdown moments. Definitely. Um, I mean, you know, I've talked to you about that. Um, overall, though, I've been actually pretty, pretty solid. I mean, I've been really busy focusing on work and this call series has taken up a lot of my time, time yeah. which has been a lot of fun for me. But yeah, the isolation of just the not having the human connection has been a, has been a challenge. But I actually, you know, I've been more creative. I've been productive. I feel more organized. So overall, I've been watching positive. your workout videos, very inspired. <laughs> I, I kind of wave at you. I wish I was doing what you were wish, doing. Yeah, I know, I right? I I was, but not. But your hair well, looks great, honey. Thanks, See, thanks. It's the important things. It's getting so much longer, but yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thanks to your, your encouragement to try this longer, longer style. Love um, it. Thank you. Very, I love that. Thank you very much. Um, can we talk about Soho Muse? I mean, yes. obviously it's an incredible uh, community that you've, you've, you've uh, 
you founded and you've nurtured for many years, but can you talk about like the inspiration for that and what Soho Muse is all about? So it is a, it is a wild ride, that is for sure. Um, understanding technology, uh, making technology seamless, um, you know, knowing that many creatives don't honestly like dealing in technology or don't like mm -hmm. promoting themselves. Some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. um, so my thought is I would come home from the studio late at night and I wondered what a world could be if a musician, a dancer, a writer, an actor could all collaborate and connect in one space. Mm -hmm. um, and I had an amazing co-founder, Umi McGuckin, who is a brilliant marketing genius and really understood about tech and she could see the vision of really what that meant to bring creatives into technology um, and at the time we were very heavily involved in 3d technology which mm -hmm. is very expensive and people were only downloading um, and so so when Muse took on many different versions and many different faces and then trying to really understand what do creatives need what is it that i'm missing in my mm -hmm. own work environment. Um, so I was on tour yeah. four years ago in Germany, mm -hmm. which actually coming from being banned in 10 countries, Germany right. was a very welcoming <laughs> place for me. They seemed to get me, they really liked it and they enjoyed it. So uh, Germany opened with open arms, which is amazing. Um, but I was on tour and choreographer was in LA and management's in Germany, and we lose a dancer in 24 hours. So literally then having to find between 15 different agencies in 24 hours, how do you find that dancer? Yeah. And this is a reoccurring problem, as you know, freelance, sure. finding people that are vetted. So I built a world where in your own trusted ecosystem, if you can do that locally, I believe you can do that globally. Mm -hmm. So the birth of Soho Muse came and it's a membership based site. You kind of look at it as the LinkedIn for creatives because it's the only, yeah. it's a business social network. Um, mm -hmm. And it's allowing a creative in all 11 verticals, whether you are a dancer, musician, an actor, to be the best of yourself in one place. And we champion you to yeah. not only be represented the right way, but if you're doing a music video, a feature film, an independent feature, we help to find and you know, kind of build the project for you. And then on the third side, we built, yes. we built out all this distribution platform. So we have these extraordinary 3D environments. So we launched our first screening room in LA um, with this amazing, extraordinary film, this transgender film uh, based on four families, two of our Soho Muse members um, mm -hmm. and a virtual screening room. So it's now bringing entertainment into 3D environments what we are representing in our external, what was our normal into uh, kind of our modern, let's say technology real world uh, that makes it inviting and engaging. So whether you're doing social events, um, art galleries, um, it's, re it's, it's so multifaceted because now really we're at a place that uh, anything can be done. Yeah, no, it's beautiful and you have, a big, I mean, you've done some uh, live concerts, you're streaming some live concerts. You have a big one tonight with one, my with one of my favorite one of my favorite 80s. My God. I think you're alone now. Yeah, I love that song. So you how, so. It's so cheesy. I did, I actually went there, I said that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's cheesy, like, but good. It's, but we need so cheesy good. during this time. And she's a sweetheart. She is just a force to be reckoned with and what a career, my goodness. So, so people can go on and it's free for people to, to stream. It and is. then at the end, you can Venmo the artist. So it's a way for the artist to then make, make some money, right? On this, you know, during this time. And I think so that that's beautiful. We do, we encourage our members to, either you can literally put a price for the actual tickets, you know, for the show, or mm -hmm. you can do tip donation, or you could actually donate to charity. So our concierge is constantly updating like every few posts to make sure to encourage people to go. And, and literally because most of these artists are on tour or they're sure. session musicians or they're choreographers I mean, they're, and they're losing so much money. So I feel like we've, I'm trying to give them a space and a 
platform to be able to really start to encourage to generate more money for them right now um, and to do something different. Because it's also, it's really hard when you haven't been used to doing that very stripped down, very raw performance, mm -hmm. how do you connect with the audience? It's even mm -hmm. like we do, this is my first Insta Live, right? How do you yeah. connect with me? Like, how do you, how does it feel comfortable? How do you engage with it? It's just, it's all these new things about yeah. now kind of understanding technology in a different way. Um, totally. And using it effectively, right? Yeah, and we're all like, we're we're definitely uh, all experimenting in that regard. Can we? Can you talk about um, your involvement at the Vanderbilt Museum? And I'd like to highlight that a little bit. Yeah, um, the Vanderbilt Museum is such an exceptional place. Um, my great grandmother, who I was named after, Consuelo, as a child, this was her summer house, and her father was an incredible explorer um, and he collected all these amazing things from his travels around the world mm -hmm. and he knew that he didn't want this property to be sold and then all of his amazing artifacts and discoveries would then really you know be gone when he you know when he went um, and so he donated the property to Suffolk County and mm -hmm. it's just what I love about this is that when you go there it's um, it's really special because it's like a it's like a family legacy place, meaning that, you know, every generation people actually go there with their kids and their grandparents are there and just they feel that they take great pride in the museum. And everyone who works there is the same way. Um, yeah. And the grounds are spectacular. And it's just it, it's an amazing place. And we're actually talking about looking at giving and building a 3D environment for the museum to start actually doing virtual exhibitions for them. That in this time right now where most of their traffic and people that come there obviously can't now. So we right. want to just keep encouraging people to go and participate and be, they do so many events throughout the year. So I joined awesome. the board probably about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Well, you're obviously like creativity is in your blood. And I, one of the things that you also launched fairly recently was the jewelry collection. And can you talk a little bit about that and what inspired that for you? So HSN, for anyone who wants to or looks to explore into this, I would say it is one of the greatest mediums in the world. It is. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. There is no training that you can get to do this show. Um, from the amount of hosting that I've done in my life there, it's just, it is another world. Um, but it's so fast and it's completely direct to consumers. So you, mm -hmm. the language, how you built the product, how you've made it engaging. You have 30 seconds when someone, let's say, is there with their kids and washing dishes to get them to come in and listen to you and be present and to buy. It's just, it's, it's a very, it's a really interesting way of uh, energy, how to talk kids. about your product and feel proud of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so this jewelry collection was in honor of the five generations of the women in my family. Um, so mm -hmm. we had pieces that were replicated. And, and, um, and I would say things like, you know, do you feel like you want to be a princess for a day? I know that I do. Do you want to take this real life piece? And I would do a comparison between the real life and what we had created to see if people could, you know, guess. I said, you know, so that when you're traveling, right, you don't want to be taking fine pieces of jewelry, let's be honest. Yeah. So you too for $49.99 can get this. <laughs> yeah, you can have a taste of what it's like to be a person. Not what it's like, no, 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 you just, <laughs> no, 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 no. For anyone, if you, listen, if your wedding ring, anything, right? You yeah. Just, I'm saying. Don't you trip me up there. No, no, <laughs> that is not what I am saying. Absolutely. I know, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. saying, for forty nine ninety nine, you two could travel. Just, just saying. Yeah. So, yes, and I did. And I wore every single one of those pieces, and I loved it. So I lo I just, I, it was such a gift to do that show. I love that you, that one, you just have so much, you're such a high energy person, and you're so determined, and you are this rebel. But can we talk about the women in your family that inspire you? So, um, actually, let, let's talk about this because 
Consuelo, uh, my great, great, great aunt. Um, the centennial of the suffragettes is actually coming up in August. And she was a huge pioneer of that. Um, mm -hmm. Gloria, who I sadly never had the chance to meet, um, Anderson's mother, I met Anderson a few times, and um, what a beacon of light he has, my God. And everything mm -hmm. he's done now, and he's amazing. Um, yeah. So I think we're about a day apart, not not an age. Don't think that over there. <laughs> Just see that brain working. Yeah. You know, I, no, I wasn't going to say it. 98 or <laughs> don't even know. You're ageless. And, yeah. And she was ageless. How beautiful yes. was she? Yeah. But I she mean, was, talk yeah. about a rebel and the fact mm -hmm. that she, a designer, an artist, you know, she gave back so much. And so I think that the mm -hmm. women in my family have truly paved the way, and especially right now, um, you know, that is, it's so important, I think, as we're in a world pandemic, you know, this is a moment to give back and to come together and to unite and collaborate. This is not about being insulated and alone, right? This is really about togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm very proud and honored to, you know, kind of the respect of the women in my family. And How does it make you feel when, you know, you're driving around Grand Central Station and you see the statue of, what was it, the, your great, great, how many great, Grandfather. Seven, seven grades. Seven grades. So I mean, I, I mean, everybody drives around the Grand, you know, Grand Central, you know, going, going uptown. And I'm just curious, random question, but I think we share the same nose. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we've got a lot of similarities in that. I think there's yes, I, I do. <laughs> I feel very proud. very important, very important it to, is, and to I feel point very out. Proud that of course, I built the railroads with my hands. <laughs> working very, very hard, and I do. I take great pride in it. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but on a serious note, I uh, think that he, what a visionary about transportation, and I feel that that's what Soho uses. It is yeah. the transportation of creativity. It's the connecting all around the world of this global mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and that they're vetted. And I think trusted communities right now are more important than ever. Oh, yeah, absolutely right. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about um, kind of another memorable moment, back to the music. Is there another story that you can share with us that kind of stands out in your mind of a moment where you were like, I've I really feel I've made it or I've accomplished, you know, part of my, my dream as a musician. I don't think that you ever feel like you've made it. I don't. Mm. I actually think it's dangerous as a, okay. as a creative to ever feel that way. Cause I think then it stops you from pushing boundaries mm -hmm. to be better. Mm -hmm. Um, my, you know, I've, I've literally put, uh, music as far as my career in that way and touring mm -hmm. um, on hold for the last three and a half years in order to build Soho Muse. Um, but when I return back to it, it's like that's my goal to be better, to communicate in a different way, to send messages and to build my music to be something different than what it was, right? So I don't, I never take it like, oh, that was the climactic moment that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and I, again, as I said, I think that's that's important because you want to always strive to be better and to keep growing and to keep accomplishing and to build with your fans. And when fans are singing your song, there, there is nothing, there is nothing greater on the planet. Mm -hmm. So I would say one of my favorite moments, um, I played a lot of Capital Prides and mm -hmm. one being in Washington on the hill and i think there was approximately 175 200,000 people and i had six dancers i think it was with me forgive me if i'm right it was one sister and we stood there and watched these amazing from 
the transgender community from lesbian to get to just a, a world of people who are standing united together mm -hmm. to make a difference. And honestly, I was, I was a puddle. I was just like, you inspire me to be great. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? That, those moments you just, it's like, mm -hmm. makes you want to give everything that you have. Um, yeah. The other thing is my band and I actually, when my mom first got sick with ovarian cancer, you know, to be Debbie Downer, but um, she, um, she just, she made dying okay. My mother just, my mother's legacy and who she was really, that is a book I want to write for sure. Um, but I got involved in an organization called the Ovarian Cancer Coalition of Greater California. And this woman, Gail McKenna, mm -hmm. was a 35 year survivor. And she just, she was a four foot eight, just bulldog. She was like, I'm not taking no for an answer. I am fighting. I will do anything. Anything yeah. you need to do, I'm doing. And I'm like, I want to be like you. I, I'm here with you right now. Um, and so my band and I ended up writing a song called Better Days. Mm -hmm. My beautiful husband, Raphael Feldman, actually co-wrote a lot of the lyrics on that. He's an amazing writer in his own right. Um, and I toured with that song. And that song became actually... Uh, our charity song. So we mm. donated 100% of the rights to both the American Cancer Society and to the Ovarian Cancer Coalition to help to, um, for research and to help to find a cure. So ovarian cancer is just a, is a brutal disease for sure. Yeah, no, of course, so, yeah. That's those, are, those are my, um, and again, we're today now doing this concert series and I'm able to do sound checks with these amazing artists and to feel them and to feel like I'm giving back mm -hmm. because this is all I've ever done in my life mm -hmm. um, is really, is, is an honor. Yeah. So again, so how do people register for Soho Muse? So if you go to www.sohomuse.com. <laughs> Come on. You gotta do, you gotta do something with that, right? <laughs> Or should I yes. say it to you? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Soho Muse, S O H O M U S E dot com. For all of you amazing creatives out there, please come and join. Kipton and I, we have a few unbelievable artists together. David Paul K. Oh my God. Yeah. What, Hi, David. what an extraordinary. And we're going to be adding more, more artists to Soho Muse as well. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're building out our virtual gallery mm -hmm. together and start looking at exhibitions that we can do. Yeah. Um, and tonight, guys, Tiffany is live at 8 p.m. I really feel like live from the red carpet. Come and see Tiffany. See, Come this see is where I 80s icon Tiffany That's at SohoMuse.com. Right. Do you see? I'm kind of in gear, by the way. I'm like, I'm you getting are. ready. What are you, yeah, I like what you're wearing. You, Your hair looks good. Thank you, Joy. So can we do one plug? Because I didn't for sure. Two months. Just because Do Glenn plug. Bradford and his beautiful wife, look at how amazing. Who, who are those by? Glenn Bradford. Glenn Bradford, okay. Glenn. Glenn, Glenn, sorry. Beautiful, Glenn. That's, that sorry. necklace as well. Beautiful. And I believe he, they are unbelievable jewelers. And they also, they, they, every piece that they create is something that also has its own art element. And there's a story behind every piece mm -hmm. um, and I love what they do. I love what they design. And I love what they stand for. So today on your show, my friend, I wanted to <laughs> support them. <laughs> You're supporting all the creatives. I'm supporting, I'm supporting everyone. And it's we, we, we love that. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for taking time today to do this with me, your first Instagram Amazing. live. And I'm so honored to have the conversation with you. And everybody sign up for the Soho Muse for the concert tonight and watch Tiffany with us. I'm gonna be there too, so. Please, and Kipton, I'm so proud of you for doing this. And Thank it's you. amazing and championing, you know, all new artists right now, which you do, and you're so well informed. And so thank you for having thank me. You. Of course. It was an honor. Yeah, of course. It was an honor to come on here with you guys. Ah, uh, sweet. All right, I'll talk to you. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Love Thank you, you for guys. joining. Thank you so much. Okay.
Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.